That hurt. Size can determine a lot of things. Whether you can ride on certain roller coasters, what position you play on a football or basketball team, and potentially how good a fighting game character is. Most people when picking a character to main, factor in things like movement speed, how much damage they do per hit, even things like how cool they look. But size is sometimes overlooked. Now when I talk about size, I'm more talking about width and height, not so much weight. Because in almost every fighting game, everyone is strong enough to throw each other, so I don't think it matters that much. But today, we're going to look at a couple fighting games and see if size makes a difference. Are characters better if they're bigger or smaller than their opponent? If you want to see more videos like this, then make sure to subscribe. It's free, and you can unsub later if you don't like the video. There's a reason why professional combat sports have weight classes. Ultimately, the heavier you are in muscle, the harder you will hit your opponent. Yes, skill does play a role, but at a professional level, you expect everyone to be skillful. So that extra weight will be an advantage. But one thing that's always being debated about is whether it's more advantageous to be tall or short when fighting. Each side has their advantages and disadvantages, but the reason why it's still being debated about today is because there's no clear answer. There are so many different fighting styles that require different techniques, but something we can see clearly is how much height affects which fighting style they choose. For example, a taller person who has long arms and legs might lean towards being a striker, since they can deliver blows from a relatively further distance. On the opposite side, a shorter person would generally want to be closer. Plus, they can have more explosive speed and agility, and they also have better balance because of their low center of gravity. This could lead to them having more of a wrestling style technique, leading to takedowns, as it's easier to take down a taller opponent than a shorter one. And in fighting games, a lot of these attributes are similar to their real life counterparts. Larger characters tend to have longer reach, and shorter characters tend to have better mobility. Now, of course, there are going to be some anomalies. Dalsum is a pretty average sized character, but as you know, his limbs can reach pretty far. And Bob is a larger character, but his size doesn't dictate how he moves. While a lot of big characters tend to be bruisers that heavily depend on their natural strength, like Iron Giant and Juggernaut, there is a fair share of grapple characters that are large as well, like Potemkin and Zangief. But perhaps the most interesting difference between fighting games and real life fighting is the extreme mismatches that fighting games allow. Anything goes in fighting games. You could be a fully grown adult fighting two 8 year olds and nobody would have a problem with it. So if that's allowed, then giant characters fighting small characters is no problem. How do you make that fair? Because if they fought like it was real life, then the bigger character would just squash the other like a bug. Interestingly enough, a lot of fighting games have similar ways of leveling the playing field. But perhaps the most easiest way to deal with this is to not deal with it at all, and just let everyone be the same size like Brahalla. It makes it easier to balance moves since you aren't factoring their reach or lack thereof because of how small or big a character is. But the most common way of dealing with this is making the small character feel big. If you've ever played Marvel vs Capcom 2, you might know of a character named Servbot. Servbot, as you can see, is pretty small. So small in fact that some normals and projectiles just fly right over him. This works pretty well against new players who think they can just spam long range moves, but there are some that will reach him. Taking Servbot at face value, there's no way his arms or legs will reach anyone, so that's why none of his moves actually involve him punching or kicking his opponent. His normals are mostly food related, which makes sense considering his name. By having this gimmick, it allows him to have a bigger hitbox. In fact, some of his moves are bigger than his own hurtbox. And he also has a move where he gets inside a mecha suit, which increases his overall size. Now despite all of this, he's one of the worst characters in the game. But wait a second, it's not because of his size. He is still harder to hit because of his small hurtbox. The main problem is that his combos barely do any damage. The reason for this is because his whole moveset is him hitting you by accident. Either he's setting up tables, almost dropping plates, eating spicy food. Even his throw is him getting scared by a rat. I think it's safe to say that he's a joke character. But another small character that uses the same technique of having big moves, but is actually meant to be taken seriously, is Sarah Bella. She's a grappler that has some of the best normals in the game, and she can do a lot of damage in a few hits. The technique that I've probably seen the most in terms of making smaller characters feel big is by pairing them up with another small character. They're two separate people, but their attacks are synchronized to feel like one entity. A good example of this are the Ice Climbers from Smash. A downside to this design is that you're pretty vulnerable once you lose one of them, since their whole game plan requires them to be together. So if you lose one, it can be frustrating. 
Another downside is that you're essentially trying to control two characters at the same time, so learning how to control them efficiently isn't exactly easy. This usually leads these type of characters being played less compared to others in the roster. Another character similar to this is Enchantress from DNF Duel. She has a bear that she can control and attack with, although you have way more control compared to the Ice Climbers. This allows for more complex combos and mix-ups, but on the other hand, she's one of the most technical characters to play. If you can handle the execution, she can be really good. Now in terms of balancing the big characters, you obviously can't do the opposite and make the big character feel small. But there are three things that most fighting games do to sort of nerf them, and they sometimes do all three at the same time. First is reducing their movement speed. We can see this with Potemkin. He doesn't have a forward dash or an air dash like the rest of the cast. And we can also see this with Sentinel's walk speed, but we'll talk more about him later. The second thing they do is limit how long their combos are. Since they do a lot of damage per hit, their combos are pretty short compared to everyone else. Again, we can see this with Potemkin and Zangief. But if you're a grappler, do you really need long combos when you can do this? All I had to do was catch the jump and it was GG. Could he have killed me? Yes, but he didn't. <laughs> also, that matchup is really hard for Potemkin. Which brings me to my next point. Big characters usually have slow normals. Well, this is the this is the first thing that is a sad truth about this matchup. And that's Potemkin cannot hit Eddie. He can hit Eddie, but he cannot hit Eddie reliably. Your fastest button is five frames. And as you can see, that button doesn't hit Eddie. And most characters have a button that's almost is five frames or six, seven, that's a low. But Temkin's second fastest move is eight frames. And this will Eddie, but eight frames is slowish. Even though they have longer reach, it takes longer for their moves to come out. It makes it harder to interrupt strings that have gaps. And sometimes it feels like you can't do anything. Now, the reason why I wanted to come back to Sentinel is because he's not really affected by any of these parameters. Although his walk speed sucks, his dash, not so much. And his combos are pretty good as well. So if he can not only outrange you, but be fast and combo easily, you could probably guess that he was broken. Overall, I think if smaller characters aren't given some kind of special mechanic like projectiles, long range normals, or some sort of assist, then I do think they are at a disadvantage because bigger characters will just outrange them. But when designed well, they can really be unique and add a different style of gameplay. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you agree or disagree with anything I said, please let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Join the Discord, I'm actually doing another Brahala giveaway for the new Prime bundle that just came out. So if you don't have Prime and you want to get that bundle for free, you have a chance to win if you join my Discord. Also make sure to follow my Twitch and also follow my Twitter for updates on my channel or anything else I'm talking about. As always, I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.